I'm on a mission to find elements. Hey, I think I found some elements. Hey, Tommy. Hello, how are you? Pretty good. You got some elements? Yes, ma'am. Plenty of elements. Got, we got some salt. That's some sodium and some chlorine to make salt. Ooh, you got some more elements. Here's some water. We have hydrogen and oxygen for those elements to make a compound of water. Cool. Sugar? Ooh, we got some sugar. The elements in sugar are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen to make the compound sugar. Thanks, Tommy. You're very welcome. Hey, I think I found some more elements. Hi. Hey, Mrs. McGee. Hi. Do you have any elements on your table? Oh, I have this coffee here. Oh, what's in your coffee? Well, coffee contains carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. Great, so it makes a compound of caffeine. And it tastes really good. Thanks, Mrs. McGee. Bye. Let's go find some more elements. Hey, Miss Cronin. What you doing? I'm reading. What are you reading? Uh, the dictionary. <laughs> oh, do you have any elements in here? Actually, there is some carpet in my paper. Oh, that's interesting. Mm. All right. Well, have a good time reading that di dictionary. Oh, why, thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. I'm on a mission to find elements. Do you have any elements in here? Yeah, of course. Which one? Oh, man. What's here in this? Here you have oxygen, zinc, iron, sodium, oh. chlorine, carbon, hydrogen, whatever you want is right there. That's a lot of elements in this. Yep. We're done finding our elements. We want to discuss uh, what exactly is an element. I was running around the school asking, do you have any elements? Turns out, element is a pure substance that you can't break down into a simpler substance by physical or chemical means. What does that mean exactly? If I had something and I broke it down to its purest form, its purest atoms that made it up, uh, those atoms uh, would be the element of that substance. So if I took, <clears throat> if I took the sugar like we found in the... Um, kitchen. I could break it down, perform chemical reactions, and I can find the the um, elements that make it up. So the simplest things that make it up. So an element is a pure substance, can't be break, can't be broken down. It has a unique set of characteristics. Um, each element has very unique characteristics, such as Fe's iron. Iron is a metal. Um, and uh, it can conduct electricity, it's magnetic. Another example would be like um, calcium. Calcium is an element, it's actually a metal as well. It's essential for bone growth. Chlorine is an element, it's a non-metal, it's a poisonous gas when it's by itself. But when we combine it with something like sodium to make table salt, it's totally harmless. Hydrogen is another element. Um, it's very explosive, but when it's in a compound, we can drink it. It's in water. Mg is also an essential element in our body. It's magnesium, and um, it is a metal as well. Nitrogen is an example of an element. It's a, um, it is a uh, non-metal, and it's 78% of the air. We played around with it. Oxygen is another essential element. Obviously, it keeps us alive. 21% of the air that we breathe. And carbon is a very essential element. It's about 80% of our body. Everything that's living, everything that's organic, is made out of carbon. So. This slide is just to show you what exactly is an element and um, how do we define it. Okay, so there's three main categories of elements that we're going to discuss. Metals is our first category. Metals are shiny. They're good conductors of electricity and heat. Thermal is heat. Um, they're malleable. We can pound them in the sheets, and they're ductile. Um, an example, especially like for malleable, aluminum's malleable. We can pound that into sheets. Um, so is things like copper. We can make our roof at Kingswood out of copper. Um, because it is malleable and it is a metal. Some other metals are sodium. Sodium is a very important element in our body. It's also the main ingredient in table salt. and We actually have to have salt in our body, a salt water mix. Uh, magnesium, I already said, 
was an essential element. I'm just going to name a couple others. Potassium is found in a lot of foods. It's an essential element in our body. Uh, same with calcium. Calcium is important for bone growth. And these are just a few um, that we're going to discuss. We're going to go into more detail on the um, different elements that we're going to have to start memorizing. But this is just an example of a couple metals that um, you are going to encounter. Also, the location of these metals on the periodic table, on the periodic table, is um, towards the left-hand side. So all the elements on the left-hand side are metals. The exception is hydrogen. It is on the left-hand side, but it's not a metal. And I'm going to show you with my periodic table right now. This periodic table is going to be a little bit different than what you're going to see um, probably in class. You're going to see one that has, you know, the symbols on it. For instance, like irons, Fe, cobalt, nickel, copper, and zinc. This periodic table doesn't have these symbols on it, but you will get one that does have symbols, and you're going to be memorizing about 30 of those symbols. But what I wanted to show you, let me make this uh, full screen. If you want to make a makeshift um, periodic table in your notes, do something like this. Take it down for hydrogen, bring it down, and then come up right here, and then up for helium. Make a little makeshift periodic table, and then two lines down here. And what I'm going to actually have you do with a highlighter is I'm going to have you color in parts of the periodic table, kind of like this, but in class, we're going to be um, a little bit more specific. The yellow color that I just did right now would be for um, our metals. And I'm going to show you more specifically. Let me, um, let me actually erase this. Sorry for the volume change. I had to switch headsets. But notice where I am highlighting. Notice that I've skipped hydrogen. I did that on purpose because hydrogen is a nonmetal. Um, even though it's on the left-hand side, it's a nonmetal. Um, uh, you'll learn about more detail about that as we go along in the book. But notice how much the periodic table is full of metals. metals. You should be coloring your makeshift periodic table that you kind of drew, not the very detailed one because we're going to do that in class. These bottom two rows way down here are also metals, so we'll go ahead and color those in as well. Okay, so that's a lot of elements on the periodic table. That's, I'd say, 80% at least. That's um, metals on the periodic table. And now we have nonmetals. Nonmetals are dull. They're poor conductors, meaning they're not going to conduct heat or electrical current. So when we go to Starbucks, we can hold our coffee in styrofoam because styrofoam is made of nonmetals, carbon mainly. Um, also, nonmetals are brittle and they're unmalleable. Some examples of nonmetals, again, are carbon, uh, nitrogen, which we played with in the lab, oxygen, chlorine, helium, and hydrogen. Those are all some examples of nonmetals. Um, one other, uh, let's go back to the periodic table and draw on our nonmetals. So again, I'm going to be getting my highlighter and I'm going to pick a different color. Uh, I think I believe this will be a different color. And let's see, we're going to draw the nonmetals. So that would be right here. All of these on the right hand side. Notice I'm leaving a a metal or some elements right next to the what's called a zigzag line, which I'll draw in black. Don't forget about hydrogen, by the way. Color that one as well. But there's something called a zigzag line, and I'm going to draw it in right here. On your makeshift periodic table, you can just kind of draw in a random zigzag line on this side of the periodic table, though. Um, so you notice that the nonmetals are going to be on the right-hand side. There's not as many as the metal category for sure, but those are going to be the nonmetals. And the last category is called the metalloids. And metalloids, I like to call them the misfits, kind of like the misfits of the family. Um, they're semiconductors, meaning some can conduct, some cannot. Some are shiny, some are dull, some are malleable, some are ductile, and some can um, conduct heat and electrical energy. So there's seven of these, seven metalloids, and here is the list. Boron, silicon, germanium, astatine, antimony, tellurium, and polonium. Those are the seven metalloids. 
And you'll notice if you go back to your periodic table, okay, the metalloids, I'm going to put them in red um, stripes. There's seven of them right here along the periodic table. That's how you can find them. We're going to go into more detail as we continue in the chapters, but they're right on the zigzag line. Now, you notice that aluminum is on the zigzag, but it's not a metalloid. It's definitely a metal, so that's the only exception. So there's seven metalloids in total that sit on the zigzag line. The last slide I want to show you is the compound slide. A compound is going to be formed by combining two or more elements. An example right here is two H's and an O, so H2O, or you can call it dihydrogen monoxide, mono means one, di means two. That's more of the sophisticated way to say it. The layman's term would be water, but that's for someone off the street that doesn't really have a lot of science background. You have more science background than that, so you can call it dihydrogen monoxide. Carbon dioxide, CO2, um, spelled like this, two oxygens. This one over here is CH4. I just gave you another random compound. This is actually methane, which is a type of gas in the atmosphere. Um, a couple things I want you to know about compounds. Write down that compounds. Um, compounds can form new properties um, when, uh, let's say, when created. I don't know if I like that terminology, but compared to their original element. And what I mean by that is, for example, I'll put my example way over here, table salt is NaCl, which is called sodium chloride. Let's see. Okay. Sodium, when it's alone, is, a, is highly reactive to water. We have water in our body, so if we ate table salt, or if we ate sodium, it would explode in our body. It's highly reactive to water. Chlorine is a poisonous gas when it's by itself. But when you form a chemical reaction and you form a new compound, NaCl combining together, their properties are harmless. So compounds can form new properties when you make them compared to their original elements, and you need a chemical reaction to do that.